talking. Are there any concrete things in the last, uh, say, year that have really put up red flags for you? So let's just kind of, I'll, I'll take one, just one domain, because every domain has its own red flags. This domain, I think, is pretty visceral. So all I have to do is look at the semantics of political discourse in the West over the past year. It requires, I think, a nice historical sense. But if you have any historical sense at all, it's pretty easy to see the semantics of political discourse in the West have accelerated away from wisdom, away from communication, and towards violence. Take that down to lower and lower levels of pragmatics and look at the way that individual human beings frame the conversation, like the way that a given person articulates the meaning of what's happening anywhere. Take any event. The way that framing constrains the possibility of any form of communion occurring in either direction, right? So if I am in that frame, I'm not actually entering into communion. I'm actually entering into ideology. And if I'm out of that frame, there's no possibility of me entering into that frame because now I'm ideologically positioned as being incapable of collaboration. This is happening in every dimension, in every location that I can identify, and it's accelerating not just at the level of, of sort of classical politics, like say what we would call you know, government, but in every, in every level. So in universities, in media, probably even in families at this point. So to simplify, you're basically saying the binary thinking or the us versus them, good versus evil kind of mentality that has become so prevalent lately. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I say is that's a very denatured position of sovereignty. Like if you're relating to people with that set of models and responses, you're at a very low level of sovereignty, which means that you're part of the problem because the way that you'll act in the world decreases the capacity for communion in the environment around you. And by the way, again, in an accelerating fashion, go to another one, map what's happening in social media and how social media as a construct is separating us from sense-making first because of its commitment to late-stage capitalism, meaning it does not actually take responsibility for maintaining high-integrity communication and coherence, but instead believes that it's completely appropriate for it to optimize for cognitive attention hijacking and limbic system manipulation. Does that make sense what I just said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay for it to fuck with us and lie to us. And then secondarily, that the way that it goes about facilitating conversation is optimized for that kind of expression. So the people who are very, very good at manipulating to us and lying to us are the most effective on this platform. And so it's going in that direction as well. By the way, broadcast media is worse. I'm not saying that we should watch TV rather than go to Facebook. They're both going to kill us. The only way to do it is direct human-to-human -human conversation. 